YouTube! What? A guitar review? Yes, here we go. So this is a Jet. Like, I have had a Jet in before, but it was like a... Kind of like a Harley Benton Strat. It was actually pretty good, that has to be said. Um, so this would be like their sort of pro range. I think they're about 400 quid, something like that. Um, so we've got quite a lot of buzzwords kicking about. Do we see on it where it's made? It doesn't. It's got its own branded... Uh, Goto type tuners, roasted or baked maple neck, gonna say rosewood fingerboards, possibly real mother of pearl inlays, a hot rail, although it must be a different, see how it's got like a flat bit in the bottom, it must be their own hot rail, um, humbucker, Les Paul toggle switch, volume control, bolt on neck, a little bit rounded, I suppose, would you call it a Charvel type thing? Oh, and it's got a Wilkinson Floyd Rose on it, uh, which I've never seen. I didn't know Wilkinson did Floyd Roses. This guitar is very new. Um, apparently it came, my pal got it in a trade. This isn't in for a fix. This this works. It's nice getting a guitar in it actually just worked without having to get fixed at first. Um, apparently some, he traded it with some guy who got given them from Jet Guitars to re review them. It's like, Jet, give me some guitars. Well, assuming I'm going to like this one. Um... Not plugged it in, well, I plugged it in, but not turned it on yet, but, um, it's very, it's a very strat neck. It's not, not, not a super thin strat neck, but the sort of C-section, slightly bigger, um, strat neck, be 22 frets. So let's turn it on, see what happens. So bridge pickup. And there's no, there's no coil splitty. So just, just humbucker some, I won't be unclean for very long. Both. Why'd you get away with clean with that one? Neck pick up. That's actually got quite a single coily sound. I've always, I've always liked the sound of the mini hot rails. They're not quite like I don't know what what type these were. It's got a Wilkinson bridge. You would think if they put Wilkinson um, pickups on it, they would get ones that said Wilkinson on them to make them look better in a spec sheet. Um, I always liked the mini humbucker, the real hum, real single coil sized real humbuckers. It's kind of weird going with a humbucker and then compare it to humbucker because all I'm always comparing it to having it in like a strat or something like that, so I've got like two single coils and the rail, thinking, oh, the rail is a bucker. It is, but it sounds an awful lot more, it's somewhere in the middle, uh, between single coil and humbucker, I think, sound-wise. A wee bit of distortion, joy of British sounds. Do you know I've not done for ages? Like, what I'm like, just notice there, like, I always say this, when you're playing a guitar, the bit you always see is kind of the side of the neck and the top of the headstock, but it's got quite a nice grain on the, I don't know if you can really see it, on the, on the top of the headstock, it's kind of like quite uniform, like, dunk, 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 which is the bit you see, which I quite like. Whether it makes any difference to the sound or not, that's a A and alpha pot in it though. So then there's like 10, 9, Eight, seven, six. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? It's like five, four. It. It, it seems to be very. Um, it's too abrupt for me. But I mean, it's good for doing volume swells and stuff like that. Some people do spec it. That you, you better. I, I prefer a B, a B tap pot, which means that when you get to sort of five on the knob, it's kind of half volume sort of thing. Rather than when you get to five, it's at 10% volume. The, the, obviously the thing what this does means that the, the last wee bit where you get your your break up bit. So you get, clean up by turning down to nine. Thank <laughs> you. 
to be on the rap pedal now, by the way. Yeah, so the 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 tremolo arm's not sitting. I, I, the, the problem with uh, tremolo arms is it kind of there is no right place for it to sit. I mean, it's, it's returning the pitch quite well and it's set float and stuff, but it seems a bit. I don't know. I kind of want it to be more pointing up the way, but maybe bent here. It depends what it is you're used to. I mean, I'm, I've been kind of used to looking at the ones that are on the the Ibanez Floyd roses, and they're definitely they don't come up as high to here and then the the actual arms at more of an angle so this bit shorter so it feels a wee bit weird but that's not necessarily wrong it's uh, just if that's the way the one you're used to i'm not very good with tremolos and partly that reason i think see if i had one guitar with a tremolo maybe i would be more able to use it it's just that all my guitars it's the tremolos in a different place so you can't really get although i can use it you always, I always have to think about it i can't really use it automatically because it's not always where it is whether I'm playing, you know, that guitar or that guitar or that guitar, it's kind of like it's in a, a slightly different angle and position. You have to hit it a certain, a certain amount. So, I mean, I suppose if we're going to try and fault it, um, I would put a push-pull coil split in to get three single coil sounds in it, seeing as it is still a Strat. But apart from that, I mean, it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll do like the colour, this sort of goldy colour. Fit and finish is excellent. Um, frets are all good. Everything seems to be of a, of a good quality. It doesn't have that cheapy guitar thing going on about it at all. This is a, you know, a £400 guitar, whatever it is. Um, if, if, you, you don't go, really? It's, it's like totally, it so obviously is. So I would probably change that knob for a B500, but I'd be changing it anyway because I'd make it a push pull for a coil clip. <laughs> It's taken, maybe it's just because I'm used to playing strats and stuff like that, it's a very, don't have to think about it to play guitar, I'm not having any, oh this is a little bit different, nothing really seems to be that different about it, it's very mid middle of the roady, not in a bad way, but just like in the terms of like the feel, you know, the size of the frets and the, the feel of the carve of the neck, everything's kind of just, it's not extreme in any direction. Pickups both sound great. But not only do both the pickups sound good, they both sound good together. They're like, they're kind of they're, they're like in the same ballpark, but being like the neck and the bridge, which I like. But they're totally exactly the same volume in a similar or perceived volume. And in the middle position. It's just kind of in the middle again, isn't it?
Yeah, no, I mean, to be honest, it's kind of totally, I mean, first time I saw it, I thought, oh, I'm not sure about the cream pickup and the cream pickup ring. I would maybe put a black pickup ring on it, but I mean, these are not, these are not faults. Yeah, I mean, okay, it doesn't have a tone control, but I mean, how often do I actually use the tone control? Not very often, and I'm sitting there saying, well, I'd probably put a coil split in to get strat sounds, but if I, I'll play my strat if I want strat sounds. Um, yeah. And although I've never really been a fan of the, the baked maple neck, it does feel rather nice. And it's the colour, I think. Um, it's a bit jobby brune, the... The baked maple, but I think there uh, there's a, there's technical reasons for it being a good thing because you know they're force drying it, which makes it um, it makes it cheaper to build, but also it means you don't need to kill. You, you can just it's it'll, it'll be it won't age. It's already pre-aged if you know what I mean. So I think that's some of the reasons why some of these guitars are just so fucking good, is because that neck, although it was dry enough when it was built 40 years ago it's had 40 years of crystallizing and turning into stone and all that which i think the bake the baking forces that earlier so you get what, what feels like an older neck even though it isn't maybe the no i can't i can't do violin anymore. Excellent guitar. Um, I actually got two in as well. The other one is, I think it's just, I don't think it's exactly the same model, but it's a very similar model, but it's, um, it's, um, it's Relict. So I, I, it's the first time I've ever actually had a Relict guitar in. Um, like where, I've had them in where somebody's tried to do it themselves with a bit of sandpaper, but never actually a factory Relict job. Um, I'm undecided on it. I've not really looked at it. I've probably... I should probably hang it on the wall just now so to see if I get used to it, to see whether I hate it when I do a video for it tomorrow or something like that. Um, I don't hate it, but the fact you've got two in this one, I, I yeah, big gold guitar. What's what's not to like? Um, and the the Wilkinson Floyd Rose. I mean, I can't obviously vouch for how uh, the the positioning of this bar is wrong, but that's the bar. I think you could probably just bend it. Um, but the actual unit. Looks very good. It looks very shiny and expensive. Um, I, saw, I also notice it's got a metal plate. See when you're putting the the bridge posts in. One of the things that often goes with, uh, with uh, Floyd Roses is the bridge posts bend because they're like only wee tiny posts that are stuck into the wood, which I think kind of happens when you use softer woods. This has actually got. Uh, the, the bridge posts are attached to a metal plate screwed into the body, which is like a, it's a repair thing I've done before, but why not just preempt the repair and just do it properly the first time? So it's kind of like, I suppose it probably only adds about three or four quid to the make of the guitar, to the build of the guitar, but I mean, that's, you know, you want, you want a guitar where they're not, they're not scrimping on saving a fiver for putting on something that's not as good. Um, I'd, I've got absolutely no issues with the pickups at all. They're great. <laughs> As I said, maybe a push-pull pot to dual coil split them would give you strat sounds, but I mean, to be honest, it's the sort of thing I would put them in a push-pull pot because I'm likely to ignore it quite a lot. But it'd be handy just to have it, just in case, you know, you've, there's a Dave Gilmore or a Pink Floyd song in your set or something like that of, of other hair metal songs, but another Brick in the Wall counts as a hair metal song or whatever. Rock on! See you later! <laughs>